Hello and welcome. Have you ever considered creating your own impulse response reverb or getting a public domain or downloading some impulse response WAV files but tinkering with them to produce an effect that you really like? Well, I've been doing that quite a bit recently and I'd like to create a video in which I discuss it a little bit. So first of all, here is an example of that latter sort, a tinkered with reverb. Now, you can hear me talking, what we have is reverb that is the impulse response from two different spring reverbs, that both of which are mono, of course, because that is the nature of spring reverb normally. I've put one on left, one on right, and then mixed them and put that in the middle, and it produces, I think you will find, a very interesting result. So, what is a reverb that's based on a impulse response. Well, an impulse response is as though you fired a starting pistol or clapped your hands infinitely loudly within a space and then you just record the sound reverberating within that space, that room or inside that machine. If you put a pulse of energy through a spring reverb, you'll get the same effect. If you put it through some form of digital reverb, you'll get the same effect. What you're looking at is the, the die down, the reverberation of a pulse. Here is an example, a pulse reverb, uh, uh, sorry, a, an impulse re uh, of a factory. Should we hear that again? So if we have a look in detail, we can see there's an initial delay, and then you get the early reverberations, so that's uh, off the floor and things very close to, and then we get the, the later, or the early reflections, and you get the late reverberations dying away. If we listen now to a spring, it's very different. Uh, well, let's have a listen. The spring reverb has a twang to it and a very distinct colour, which a room doesn't. And that is one of the reasons why springs have such a characteristic sound to them.